You asked, and I'm delivering. After not wanting to initially, I'm finally dedicating some time to doing a new mini-series here that I'm actually pretty excited for. This is going to be a series about setting up Plex Media Server for newbies from scratch. It's going to be divided into a couple different episodes. In this first episode, we are covering setting up the Plex Media Server initially, getting the actual software set up on your computer, what you need, things like that. And then we'll get into organizing your different media files into libraries and then some advanced tips and tricks to kind of get the most out of Plex. So I'm estimating three episodes here. This one's going to be fairly basic, just getting the server set up. Now, for Windows specifically, which is what I'm covering in this episode, and we can rehash this with a different operating system if desired, you need Windows 7 with Service Pack 1 or newer. So for most people, this is fine. If you're on XP, I guess you're screwed at this point, but for the most part, you're good to go. So you're going to start out here by going to my affiliate link for Plex in the description below. As always, this series is part of a sponsored monthly series for Plex on my channel. Go to my affiliate link to get Plex for free and download your free Plex Media Server installer. Go ahead and save that wherever you normally save stuff. And once it's done, go ahead and click on the installer and run it. We're gonna go ahead and close our browser window. We don't need that for right now. Setup will install Plex Media Server on your computer. You do have a couple options here as far as where it installs. If you have a secondary drive you install stuff to or what have you, you can do that here. Otherwise, you're good to go. Tell it to install and approve the UAC prompt asking for your permission to run in the installer. This will take a moment. Now, the computer that you are installing this on is going to be the computer that actually distributes your media to other devices. So you need to choose a computer that you can either leave on all the time or turn on when you want to watch media and you don't mind having this run in the background. If you are doing direct streaming instead of transcoding for like mobile devices and stuff, basically if you want to watch it on a smart TV or other computers, then you're pretty much, you can use whatever relatively newer computer that you have. If you want to be able to compress it on the fly for playing on smartphones or streaming across the internet to when you're on vacation or something like that, you'll need a much more powerful computer. And if desired, we can dedicate another episode towards talking about this. But for now, we're just going to set this up as if this is the computer we're going to be streaming from your family computer, a dedicated server, you know, whatever you wish to set up, set up successful. I'm going to click launch. Now this will run a program in the background on your computer, which will do most of the work within your operating system and you're using your computer hardware to do a lot of stuff, but you will manage everything from a browser window that actually connects to the server and gives you the interface to actually interact with this stuff. You do have some options within their Plex Media Player app, which we will cover later, but go ahead and sign in with a Plex account. You can make one for free, again, with my affiliate links. Go ahead and sign in here and we will get set up and get some options going. Hey, this actually describes what I just said. Plex Media Server runs on the computer where you keep your media. It automatically scans, organizes, makes it beautiful, and shares it to any stream, any screen with the app. Got it. So here we're actually gonna customize what our server looks like and all of that. So you can give it a server name. So if you have multiple servers or you're connected to a friend's server or something like that, you want a name so that you can recognize it. This is important for me because I have a bunch of Plex servers running from all the experiments I do. Uh, but for the most part, you can just call it like family Plex server or something. I'm gonna leave it Jarvis. That's the computer name that it's running on for now. And then you have an option here to automatically allow you to access your media outside your home. Now this doesn't open it up for anyone to access. This is just for you and it will be authenticated through your Plex account to try to keep it secure and yada yada. If you know that you never want to do this, if you know that you never want to connect to an outside network in order to play your Plex media, then I would uncheck this just for the most security. However, if that is something you want to do, you can leave it checked, but keep in mind, this may not actually be able to customize your router settings or whatever to allow this. So you may have extra steps in the future, which we'll cover in the advanced video. We're gonna click next here. Once it's done here, we're gonna set up our media library folders, which is where it's going to store and then organize your media files. So by default, it sets up a music and pictures one on this computer. If we edit the music one here, you can give it a name. So if you want to, for example, you can set up different like libraries of different kinds of files. So if you have music and then one that's a music li library, but it's actually audiobooks, you can call it audiobooks, things like that, as well as customize the English or the English, <laughs> the language for everything. Give it a name. I'll just leave it as music. And then you add folders, which is where you, it is pulling the media from and where you are actually storing your media. So it pulls the default music folder for this computer. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not actually messing with music a whole lot, but I do want to 
have the option here while we set this up for the tutorial. So you can change where you actually want to store it. So for example, by default here, this is pulling the default music, movies, documents, videos, folders that Windows automatically sets up for your profile, which is for a lot of people, probably what you want. But if you have a dedicated like hard drive that you're setting up for Plex, or you have a dedicated movies drive that you have, with, be it an external or an internal, my Plex servers used to run a whole bunch of external hard drives, then you can change it here. So for example, I can come in here and say this record folder is my music folder, then I can tell it my secondary hard drive music folder is my music library, but I'm going to leave it as that folder for now. Under options, you have two different settings depending on your account. If you have a Plex Pass and if you want to sign up for one, use my affiliate link in the description below, of course, as always. You can create a uh, Plex me Premium Music Library, which will automatically find lyrics and it will automatically create mood playlists based on your music. You can tell it to do things like that. We're going to create a basic music library for now, which will still pull metadata, will still allow you to organize your music, but doesn't have some of the more advanced features because I'm going to assume you don't have Plex Pass yet. You're probably not convinced that you need it yet. We'll get to that. I do have a whole video going over the feature differences in the description if you want to check that out. Click next. All right, here you have a couple more advanced options under advanced here. Uh, these are totally up to you. And for the most part, you can probably just ignore them if you're not wanting to. Include in dashboard. So if you have a, <laughs> if you have a library that you're adding that has more sensitive videos or music or whatever that you don't want made abundantly obvious every time you open up Plex or every time your family opens up to Plex, you can actually have it kind of not emphasize or show or feature those files and you have to manually find it. For most people, you want that included on your Plex dashboard, which is what this option is for. As far as album sorting goes, you can have the library default, which will have you have a few different options, and usually it's by newest first, but you have a few different options here. You can have a sort by name, oldest first, newest first, whatever. I'm gonna sort by newest first. Use embedded tags. So if you have files, this was much more common during Windows Vista, but there are still some files that have tags within the actual files metadata, such as the genre of the music, the description of the file, like it had actual tags like a YouTube video would have, you can have it try to pick those up and include that to help find metadata. You can use that. Store track progress. So this is something that some people really love and then some people don't want, of course. And that is if you play a song and then you pause it and go do something else, whenever that song comes back up, it's already going to know where you are. For normal music playing, you probably don't want this at all. But if you are storing podcasts or audiobooks, you would want to include that. That way, when you go back to the podcast or audiobook, it knows where you are in that file and you don't have to start it over from the beginning. So it depends on what files you are using here, which is why I mentioned you might want separate audio based libraries that aren't just music, but you know, music and audiobooks and podcasts and things like that. So I'm going to leave that unchecked for my music. Include related content from shared libraries. So if you have other Plex libraries shared with you from friends or family or what have you, it can actually include that in your library here for suggestions like, oh, you have one song by this artist, but this other library in your account has more songs from it. Go check that out. Now, the agent is what it uses to find the metadata for your music. So the artist, the title, things like that. For the most part, just leave it on last.fm unless you have a reason not to. And you can uncheck some of the stuff. I'm actually going to uncheck download concert information because I don't care about that and I don't want it wasting time or data. Just set that up. Easy. Then click add library. So that set up the music library. We're going to run through the photos library next. I'll right, leave this as photos. Language none is fine. I'll leave it on English just to be safe, but your photos don't usually have a language. <laughs> add folders. Again, it's going to detect the default photo pictures library on Windows. That is fine. Options. Again, a Plex Pass feature is to automatically tag your pictures based on uh, neural net detection of what's in the photo. If you prefer your privacy and for it not to scan that stuff, of course, say no thanks. It is an option. I'm going to leave it on no thanks for now. They do have information about how your privacy is maintained and yada yada for all of that, but it does send some information from to a third party source temporarily. So a lot of people are concerned about that. You have the option of turning it off and you don't even have the option of using it unless you have a Plex Pass. And then again, under advanced, including dashboard, video preview thumbnails. So if you have videos in your pictures library, it can give you preview thumbnails that it automatically generates. It takes a little bit more processing power, so you might not want to do that, but it's there. And then it can save the location names of pictures that have metadata attached to them if you have a camera that has GPS or something like that, or your phone. So I'm going to leave all of that as is, click Add to Library, and then we're going to make a new library that isn't automatically generated here. We're going to make one for movies. I'm just going to call it movies. 
add folder. I don't actually have a folder for this, so I'm going to have to go back out to Explorer and make a folder for it. I have this 500 gig hard drive I'm not using here. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this Movies. And I'm going to make another one, call it TV Shows. So I'm going to go to Browse for Media Folder, that F drive, Movies, add that folder. And then I will add all of my movie rips that I ripped from Blu-rays and DVDs to that folder. Go to Advanced, and again, include in Dashboard. You can include cinema trailers to play before movies. I'm going to uncheck that. I find it to be a waste of time personally, but some people like getting that preview, kind of how Netflix delivers before you choose it. Again, generating thumbnails of the videos. Collections. You can choose whether it shows items that are in collections. So collections are kind of like playlists. You can create like a collection of all the Star Wars movies, and then it will show when you play one of the Star Wars movies that it's in a collection with others, so you can go view the rest of the collection. That's up to you here. It's a pretty handy feature, but not everybody uses it. You can choose the scanner. You have video files scanner or movie scanner. So depending on what's in it, I'm going to use movie scanner for this one, but we'll set up another library with the other one in a moment. Agent, again, there's a couple different metadata providers. I leave it on default for now. Uh, if you have experience or people you've talked to in the forums that have better luck getting certain niche movies from other metadata providers, you can choose that there. That's where the agent are. agents are. Localized titles. You can have it set to automatically basically translate the titles based on where things are from or leave them in their original languages if you have foreign films. Find trailers and extras automatically. I'm going to uncheck that for now. Skipped extra extras which aren't trailers. Not going to check that because I don't want trailers as I keep saying it. Use restricted audiences trailers when available so you can get the like rated R trailers for movies instead of the PG trailers for R rated movies. Uh, included include extras with subtitles and library language. That's you know it, when you sort by language, it'll include. So if you have English subtitles for something, and then you're sorting by English, it will include those based on the language. Cast list source again. You have different databases you can choose from. I'll choose IMDb. Rating source. I'll choose IMDb. Plot summary source. I'll choose IMDb. I don't have too much of a preference for it, but whatever. You can choose your location so that it helps you find your movie information easier. Use collection info from the movie database. So if if the movie database itself already has like movies are in a collection together, like the Star Wars franchise or the Matrix trilogy or something, it can automatically pull that and help you out a little bit. I'm going to check that. Include adult content. Depending on your library, you may or may not want that. Again, click add library. We're going to make two more videos library libraries here. I'm going to kind of run through this a little bit quicker. TV shows. Again, add folders. I'm going to choose that folder I made for TV shows. I'm going to click add. Advanced options. They are mostly the same episode sorting, oldest or newest first, or library default. I'm going to leave it on library default. It's basically season and then oldest to newest, you know, episode 1 through episode 26 or what have you. Collections, show them. We already covered that. Seasons, you can show or hide. I'm going to hide it for single season series. So if there's only ever a se single, series of, or single season of a series, I'm going to have it not bother showing seasons. It's more things to click through, uh, but you can choose that yourself. Agent of, again, that's metadata. I'm going to leave it on TVDB. Find trailers and extras automatically. I'm going to uncheck. Include extras with so subtitles and library language. I'm going to check. Add library. Now we're going to make an other videos library. And this is going to be called Gameplay Recordings. And so this is my recordings folder for all of the gameplay capture that I've done on this computer. So add to folders, browse media folder. We're going to go to E and my record folder. And I'm going to click add. Now for advanced, we have some slightly different options. Include cinema trailers. I'm going to uncheck that. I don't have movies. Preview thumbnails. I do want those, so I know what the heck I'm looking at. Again, I can show collections, and this is where that separate scanner comes in. Instead of a movie scanner, it's a video file scanner. It's just kind of more fine-tuned to be like others instead of specifically movies or TV shows. I'm going to leave that or change it to that. Agent, personal media, Plex movie, Plex movie database. I'm going to leave it on personal media because there's nothing in here that it's going to find metadata for because it's all my own custom recordings. Add library. All right, we have successfully set up our different libraries for our media folders. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now it will give you the option to get your Plex apps for your different devices. You can go ahead and do that if you'd like. It'll take you to a different web page with the latest downloads. So you have Windows, go to apps and devices. You've got the Plex Media Player for Windows. You've got, this does not show up very well on my monitor, but for Plex Media Server, there is Synology, QNAP, Docker, Linux, Mac, whatever. For the apps for actually playing, you do want to download the Plex Media Player for Windows. You do not want the Windows Store version of the app. I have a whole video dedicated to this linked in the description, but you want the downloaded option from their website, not the Windows Store version. 
But if you go to operating system, there's versions for Mac, Amazon TV, Apple TV, Xbox One, iOS, Android, whatever. Download your apps if so desired. And then we're going to click done. And it's going to go ahead and scan your folders. And it's not loading things since it's still in the middle of scanning. And detect what is in your folders. Now, my movies, music, photos, and TV show folders are all empty. So the only one it has to scan is my gameplay recording folders. Now, I don't have a clue why it's giving me this error. That seems to just be a random error. You can see here, I checked the option for uh, being available outside my network, but it looks like, you know, it, it doesn't like my... I have a pretty stupid router set up at the moment, so it doesn't really like that. That's fine, but you will have to dive in more specifically with your specific routers and modems in order to port forward and things like that if you wish to set up remote access. That is a whole separate video entirely. All right, so a possible fix here based on how I set this up for this unexpected error may have to do with not running the server as administrator. So I'm going to go ahead and close this management tab here, and I'm going to go to my system tray, and I'm going to right-click the Plex server icon and click Exit. And then I'm going to find the Plex option itself. So I'm going to type Plex Media Server into the Start menu, right-click it, go to Open File Location, right-click that shortcut, Properties, uh, Compatibility, and uh, where is the administrator? Yeah, run this program as administrator. Click Apply. And then every time it runs, it should have more access to your folders, and that should theoretically fix the issue according to the forums. Then we open it up here. There we go. Now it's working. You can see here under our gameplay or under our dashboard, this is what your dashboard looks like for your Plex Media Server. And this is what your players will show basically, depending on what app you're using. So it will show your recently added stuff and your recently added photos and things like that. So you can see some stuff I was testing with webcam tests, a random picture of an album I was listening to, screenshots I've taken, and then recently added photos. And then once you actually start playing stuff, it'll have like continue where you left off and it'll have sorted by TV shows and things like that. We only have a little bit in here at the moment. You can browse your different libraries. You can see, like I said, most of them are empty. In my photos library, I have these. You can check out my RuneScape screenshots that I accidentally took. Warframe screenshot, album artwork, Intel logos from old streams. Don't know what that was a screenshot of, but you get the idea. And then we can go back with that arrow there. You can go check out gameplay recordings. We can play one. It does not like the codec I used. That is pretty trippy. Oh, there we go. We're good. Now, this is one thing I wanted to showcase with the Plex Media Server, is you see I'm playing it through the web browser here, and it looks super soft, and it has some weird issues. And if we go to the quality settings, it's under Quality Convert Maximum. If it's any option for convert, and if I hit Show All, I can convert it all the way down to 480p. If I'm converting, that means that it's compressing in real time, almost as if you're live streaming on the computer that you're running. We don't want to do that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and cancel that so I don't royally screw up this recording. And you can see this activity icon in the top right. You click it, go to which server you're managing, dashboard. You can see it shows what, what files you have compressing. It has this whole cool analytics thing to show what's playing right now, how much bandwidth you're using, how much CPU power is being used by Plex Media Server and things like that as well as how much system memory is being used. Play history, you have a lot of stuff to manage that here. We can cover more later. Um, but you want to X out of any ongoing play stuff like I just did at the bottom of your screen there. And you don't want it to be converting in real time because that is using up your system resources. In most cases, you want to be playing back with direct play, which the web browser can't do. You have to download the Plex Media app for that. Again, the Windows Store app doesn't do it as well. Once you have installed that, we can launch Plex Media Player, and you can launch this on any machine. And go ahead and load it up. Now, when I logged into the app myself, I'm logged into a different server. So in your dashboard in the top left-hand corner, uh, there's an update. I'll tell it to install an X restart. You can actually choose which server you're connected to. You can see I have a lot of stuff set up. So I'm going to connect to our new server we just created. You can see all this stuff here. So now I'm going to play back a recording, gameplay recordings. We'll go to that same one real quick. Now, if I go to the quality setting, we are on original quality. 
which means when it says play original quality and it shows some crazy information, that means it is direct playing just the file as if you were playing it locally. So it's not using any extra resources on either machine. And it looks a lot higher quality because it's such a much higher, you know, bit rate and resolution. So I'm going to close out that one. We can go check out a different one. We got some Apex Legends footage here. Again, quality, original, 1440p, 50 megabits per second. Looking nice and crispy. And we now officially have a Plex media server up and running. It's only showing our gameplay and some pictures at the moment, but it is a nice start. That's a pretty cool wallpaper. I don't remember getting that, <laughs> but it's a pretty nice start for getting this going. So this is part one of my mini series of how to set up a Plex media server. And I mentioned that it would be roughly three episodes based on the different tiers that I set up here. But if you do have feedback, we can insert or change what future episodes look like since I'm doing one of these every month based on what you all want to hear. So do let me know in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. Go check out my Plex affiliate links if you want to get set up. Again, you can get set up for free. Get going and I have videos showing why more in depth why you want the Plex Media Player app from the download, not from Windows Store, as well as the free versus paid options. So you can get more information on that. I'm Eples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in a future video.